Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and we enjoy it one nibble at a time. One nibble. Just the littlest nibble at a time. It's funny because this is like one nibble but of two separate meals. <laughs> yeah, the, it, well, uh, this is like taking two different sandwiches and smashing them together. I don't like that. That's weird. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this episode, so X-Men 97, episode four, Motendo and Life Death Part 1. We have a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. It's going to be probably a little shorter episode because we don't have two episodes to talk about like we did on our first one. Yeah, we had three. We had three. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because we, we, we waited skipped. two weeks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if I am sitting very rigidly i have like a back injury right now so i'm very much like mojo and his i wish i had mojo's chair oh my god just walk me around and also have a thing that shoots stuff yeah that'd be really cool so programming stuff is it a program are we a program yeah Yeah. we're a show episode Um, show we have a lot of fun stuff coming up so yes we are doing x-men 97 releasing them on saturday mornings so hello, if you're listening to this on Saturday morning with your bowl of cereal, I hope. What if, cereal are you eating? If you are, let us know what cereal you're eating. That'd be fun. But we have some very exciting things coming up. We got some interview stuff and some like saw things before it's released some stuff. And we kind of hinted it on our Patreon, but we're not going to say it yet. So you'll be surprised. Yeah. So we're going to have some double up weeks, which is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much content coming yeah. your way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very, very. I'll, I'll just say one because one is coming out like next week. So Fallout. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to watch Fallout. We will have a review on that. So that's going to be interesting. Thanks, Prime Video. Wink. <laughs> so lucky. Thanks. <laughs> and then last but not least, you know, if you're watching this, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this, subscribe to the channel. Throw some stars our way. Do a thumbs up. Leave a comment. All that great stuff. Yeah. Patreon. Support the show. Keep the mics on. Oh, X-Men 97. Spoiler alert. You have been alerted for spoilers for two very separate storylines that happened in one episode. All right. So (laughs) let us officially take a bite of X-Men 97 episode four, Motendo slash Life Death Part One, directed by Chase Conley and written by Bo DeMeo. Jubilee's plans for her 18th birthday go haywire when she and Roberto are trapped in Motendo. The luminous pair travel through levels of her life and come face to face with her own face. Storm (laughs) forges a bond with Forge as they forge ahead in a plan for her to regain her powers. Unfortunately for Storm, a storm brews after learning about Forge's past and she is confronted with a demon who wants to consume her powerless grief. Wow. With a lack of storms. I liked using that the same words to mean the same thing. Um, what, are, what is that called? Art. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Oh, no. We can't laugh in this episode. No fun on this episode. <laughs> what is it? A hom- homonym? That, uh, no, a homonym is like witch and witch. Oh, <laughs> it's, whatever it's literally the meaning of the word it's just their names <laughs> no yeah so i guess you're right yeah it is a homonym it's forge and forge but it's it's a proper noun and and then the actual thing anyway <laughs> out of a bite of school <laughs> it's not, all right so how did you feel about this episode slash two minisodes i uh, believe together? when it ended i looked at you and i said that was weird And I think I still kind of sit with that, but not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I think that they were just very different episodes. You know, I was, as I was thinking about it, I was like, there are similarities, right? So there are really two people at the center of both stories, both male and female, having some sort of relationship beyond just being a pair of mutants. Uh, And I think that they were both trying to discover what their powers are and who they truly are. Uh, But they're presented in very different ways. Yeah, I I I didn't mind it. Um, I think this is the first, not flaw, I don't want to say flaw, because since this episode, it's been 10 out of 10. And I think them together, great on their own. Putting them together, it does very much feel like those old cartoons and stuff like that, or even old TV shows right. where they would kind of do that. Yeah, I believe the only 
most recent thing that's done this is Sandman when they released that episode 11 Mm -hmm. and they had two completely different episodes, but just told the story. The only like, not to start this off with like a critique. The only thing is I wish they just had life death by itself because of what happens in that episode. And we'll get more into that when we get to it, but it needed a little bit more room to breathe for, you know, that I love you to like, be worth it and sure. to have that impact because it just it was so brisk yeah i'm curious about the decision of doing them back to back instead of integrating them together that was interesting because i really do think that they mirror each other it, it's a similar journey between the two pairs so why not splice them together like you would any other sort of drama i mean in the last couple of episodes we saw that we saw different characters dealing with things at the same time So why in this episode in particular did they want to separate them? And also, I feel like it was a little imbalanced in the sense that I think it was more two-thirds Motendo and one-third Life and Death. Yeah, I think Life and Death got maybe 10 minutes. Oh, Life, Death, not End. Yeah. Life, Death. (laughs) Life, Death got about 10 minutes. So, you know, it's one of those things where I think I'm fine with it. You know, maybe they really wanted to tell this Motendo story, but like there wasn't enough of what they had to make it the full runtime. You know, it is what it is at this point, but I feel like maybe not having it with life death probably would have been better. And it's Mm. almost like Motendo had so much action and all this like high energy stuff. And then life death was somber and quiet. Mm -hmm. So maybe to keep that energy and to like keep people engaged, they were like, let's have a higher energy thing. And then this, Mm. I don't necessarily need that, but I can see the reasoning behind it. I just want, I want Storm's story to be able to breathe just a little bit. Yes. Truly feel the breeze. Because I think it's only two parts. uh, Yes. For this story. So, Motendo. Let's get into this episode Mm. a little bit. I love the beginning part because there's quite a few things that happen before they get to the arcade. Yes. I want to start with the first, first, first thing that I want to talk about. Again, at least I believe we are seeing Gambit's culinary exploration. I'm very sure he cooked those muffins. Well, he probably did. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's serving everyone. And right off the bat, we start to see this little weird tension in this love triangle, right? Between Magneto, Rogue, and We Gambit. don't know if it's a love triangle, but it's definitely some like dick measuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like a pissing contest of yeah. some sort. And I am kind of curious about how Gambit is feeling about this because he plays it off very coolly. I think he doesn't have any hard evidence yet, and I do believe he trusts Rogue. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. I'm not sure. I also, I don't know the status of their relationship. Are nope. they official? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, oh, God. I'm getting like comics in the show. I, well, I mean, yeah, they're together for sure in the show. I know in the comics they're married. Are they married in the animated? Maybe not. I don't think so. But they're definitely together. Okay. Is like... They're for sure together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like how he's like, oh, I got you coffee. And the Magnus like, I already did it. Three sugars. <laughs> okay. How long have you guys not been together? And you know that she likes three sugars. And also she's sitting there with a mug already. <laughs> and also Magneto, who's going to wash those spoons? You? I don't think so. <laughs> three? Mm-mm. He can probably just make the dirt come off of them. It's the master right. of magnetism. Um, and then the last thing I want to say about this beginning thing is morph. Making fun of Magneto's dead parents, and especially with like how they died. It's like, Morph, shh. You know what? Look, Morph, <laughs> I think, was just trying to relieve some of the tension, okay? And it backfired. He on really them, was. <laughs> unfortunately. And I, and I also am a little annoyed at Magneto in the sense that like, okay, you, you just got here, right? And you're already pulling rank on everyone who has been an X-Men much longer than you have. Right. And he's like, we're going to practice all day. And they're like, but it's Jubilee's birthday. And he's like, not my problem. No, it's not. You know, they need to train. I do feel like there is a time and place. But like, if you're going to do the danger room, like maybe have like it be a party theme. And also like train. Like laser tag. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He could go the extra mile. But I don't think he like, you know, the Brotherhood of Mutants really wasn't there to throw parties. So mm. I think he needs to learn how to also... Sure. Engage in a family. <laughs> I, I, do, I do think it's kind of funny. And, and like, this is just the life of being an X-Men, I think, is 
literally maybe a day or two ago, we discovered that the uh, Jean Grey who's been living with us is actually a clone and everything's just back to normal. Everyone's like, okay, well, she left. Well, they're gone <laughs> right, at this exactly. point too. They're, yeah. they're at the UN. And I really did like how in the intro, they've been changing things every mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. And in this one, you see that Jean actually has her hair up in this and not down. So the intro for the first three was actually Madeline Pryor. Mm-hmm. And now it's finally Jean. So it's just the small little details that are like, that's cool. The gene for the prior three was actually Madeline Pryor. Yeah, I knew you were going to have one. You got it. I, I saw it in your eye. It was like, right there. <laughs> All right. So to the game, Mojo, got to love him and got to hate him. Oh, totally. This particular Mojo definitely looks like he like, <laughs> went through some like weight loss or whatever. But I like how they explained it with like he feeds off of the ratings, right? This right. interdimensional alien needs to put on a show to get the ratings. It's mm-hmm. just a... It's a really cool concept, and I love that we're finally getting something now with the X-Men that show how kind of kooky and weird Mm. the X-Men can be, and this was a great showing for that. Yes, I believe it is a commentary on how uh, humanity consumes reality TV and watching those struggle in things like Survivor or Big Brother. Yeah. Or it's just silly fun, whatever you want to think of it. I did love, you know, I was doing a little research on, on Mojo, and- I think I was inspired by this from Marvel.com. Uh, Mojo rules over the planet Mojo world in the dimension dubbed the Mojoverse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so it's just like using Mojo in as many things as possible. That's uh, why it's not Nintendo. It's Motendo. It's Motendo, yeah. yes. <laughs> I also like how Motendo has just appeared in Jubilee's room and she's like, yeah. cool, let's play it. No big deal. <laughs> Interdimensional alien. This is what he does. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he, it's how he rules. The really cool thing about this episode is that we got to see some of the big hits, like they said in this episode. So we got to see Savage Land. We got to see Magneto's space base. Um, we got to see Genosha a little bit, very briefly. Um, so it's really cool to kind of go back to those very iconic things in mm. this. But this story, while it's being fun and injected with nostalgia, because we got that arcade game, which most of us know, and it's amazing. I was always Wolverine when I played that because it was just fun to slice slice and dice things. I was always Storm. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. By the way, everyone, you can purchase the actual arcade cabinet for about $500 brand new on Wayfair, Best Buy, and a couple other places. I'm just putting that out there. Like, you don't even have to bid for it. No. You can just buy it. Yeah, that was tempting. He, Derek, literally, before we started, he was like, am I going to do this? Like, should I buy this arcade cabinet? I was like, we don't have room, even though we have a whole basement. I was like, we have a basement. What do you mean we have no room? It's like, that's all I would be doing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really fun, though. I'm just, you know, maybe, maybe we will. A little tournament. Maybe we'll, maybe that'll be our Christmas gift to each other this year. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the episode, ah, you know, what, what does there more to say than like, they hit it, right? They gave us that feel of the arcade. They gave us a story with it. It was fun. Yeah. My my favorite parts in this episode was actually when it pulled out from being in the game with them to watching the game when it really had that sort of, I mean, it wasn't 8-bit. It was obviously more than that 16-bit look to it, that full-on nostalgia moment of them in the side-scroller. Yeah. It was I, amazing. It was really fun. So another thing I... I like seeing in this is that we get to see Jubilee being more self-assured throughout this entire journey, right? Roberto is kind of the young fool that's falling around. We see it in, you know, by reliving her life, seeing all the past trials she's been in, you know, leading up to her 18th birthday, who knew she was even 17 years old at this point. And I even love seeing when they're falling from the sky, Roberto's falling on his butt and she's landing in the perfect superhero pose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what, you can tell who has training and who doesn't. Yeah. Um, it was great because it also, you know, it's a kid turning 18. So they're having to deal with like, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm an adult. So like, are you going to stay in this video game forever and never age and just replay the hits all the time? But I think with having Roberto there grounded her a little bit and showed her that there are stakes mm. and maybe this isn't the best place to be. Like, it's a little enticing. But you need to like wake up. Well, right. It, it's that thing of like, wouldn't we all love to just play all day? Right, right. But it, we can't. You know, although it seems annoying that Magneto says, no, you can't celebrate your birthday. You have to train. Okay. Place and time. But 
I think that's that on him. Right. <laughs> but there is that point of, yes, it would be wonderful if we could live in a land of video games, but there is something that we're truly fighting against here. Right. Right. The last kind of Easter egg thing that I'll say is I loved it when they first really landed in it and the posters behind them was Days of Future Past. It was very much yes. an homage to that. It was that's great. Those little tiny things. If you found an Easter egg that you really like that we didn't mention, just let us know because there are so many mm-hmm. in this. And then a big thing that happens in this is we get a different version of Jubilee. Mm-hmm. And in the show, it's a little different than the actual version that happens. So Ab- Absissa, is that how you would say it? Mm-hmm. Right. In the comics, it's an actual like alternate future version of her. And this is just a hologram. But the story and everything, you know, really just is the same thing. Jubilee gets to see like her powers aren't just these tiny little fireworks and stuff. She can do a lot more with that. And she actually does it in this episode Mm -hmm. and i love that i love it when they show jubilee isn't just some kid that does sparklers from her fingers she's a badass yeah and what obsessa really illustrates for us is that it's not only coming from her hands right is that she uses these projectiles to almost as skates yeah right she can fly across the floor with them and then she even from her hands changes them into buzz saws of light that can cut through things it's pretty badass yeah and having allison court come back to voice the older version who is the original voice uh, actor for jubilee is amazing Mm -hmm. and they actually like so you know allison court specifically said like i i'm not asian american somebody that is asian american should voice the character but i still like that they gave her that little tiny moment of like thank you for doing this that's really cool yeah it was really cool so much care the the and and the character of Absissa, right, just also shows that growth. It's so cool. Yeah, I just love her. I oh, like her my. chain mail, her like pointy fingers. Yeah. What has she been through in this video game? <laughs> in countless, this world of circuits, countless, countless beta testing. Yes, yes. I also wanted to bring up Spiral. Yeah, she's cool. Right. So a couple of episodes ago, we were like, "Oh, who did Morph turn into? The person with all the arms." Forgot her name. So it turns out it's Spiral. And so Spiral is interesting. You know, in the Mojo verse, Mojo has all of these slaves, right? And Spiral is one of them. And so she's still working for him. She's helping to try and stop the hacker, who we later learn is Absissa. But at the end of the episode, it almost seems like she is one of the people who helps defeat Mojo. In that moment, she kind of appears behind him and like pushes his head down. Well, yeah, he's defeated. He, yeah. He, she's his slave. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, she kind of gets the upper hand in the situation. But, you know, in, in reading about her, she actually ends up joining a group with Madeline Pryor. Mm-hmm. So, this is something interesting. You know, are they going to maybe lean towards that? Will we see more of Spiral and, and Madeline? That's where this show could really go anywhere because there's a lot of storylines where, like, there's not some characters in it and they do show us some stuff. I, and then, the next part of this episode, Forge, you see on a board or something like that, you see the X Factor team and it has like Wolf Spain and Multiple Man and all of them. And it's like, are we going to see any of these people? Mm. Maybe. Mm. I'm very excited to see if anything like that happens. Yeah, I am as well. And, and I love seeing those little Easter eggs in the background and you can see, oh, Polaris and Wolf Spain. Right. You know, and, and seeing their lives prior to this moment and that they have existed, right? They're fleshing out these characters a little more. Uh, and of course... You know, at the end of this entire first part, we get the smooch. The smooch. I didn't expect that, to be honest. I like, I mean, there were some moments where I, I guess I was just assuming like, oh, they're developing a good friendship. And then when they smooched, I was like, oh, they like, like, like each other. Happy 18th birthday. I'm fine with that. Like, yeah. let Jubilee have a love life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I hope it all goes well and there's not like some breakup that like makes them leave the team, but like. <laughs> I'm rooting for them. I think they're cool. I agree. And again, I, I feel like I'm 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 beating a dead horse here in a sense. But I think we again are solidifying Jubilee as a hero and not a kid oh, anymore, yeah. right? So giving her a love interest, giving her uh, an evolution of her powers. This is all just saying she's not just the kid of the team anymore. She's now a full fledged X Men. Oh, speaking of full fledged X Men. Should we go on to life, death, life, death and horses? <laughs> I was like, what horses? Oh, that's right. Hello. <laughs> they ride horses. So she could feel the wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so life, death is an interesting one. It's very quiet. I loved it because it got gave Storm a little bit more breathing room and some playground um, to work with, especially the voice actor, the voices Storm voiced the adversary at the end. So it's like a cool double like 
Oh, she got to like, not just I am mistress of the element. She got to be creepy and scary. Loved it. I, from like Chris Claremont's story being part of a bigger story. There's a whole story arc with this. I felt like it was very rushed. Did I like it? Yes. You know, I think it's a very much cliff notes version of this story. Um, but I think I can't really be like, it's not that great until I see the second part. Right. Mm -hmm. I really want to see how they're going to round this out and Mm -hmm. to see where it goes. But I liked it. I, I liked it as well. I think what's hard to sort of digest in this situation is that in the last episode, storm has met forge for the first time. We don't know how much time has passed a day, right? That's what it feels like. It feels like it hasn't been that much time. And for them to create such a strong bond for him to profess his love for her. It feels like, wow, we missed a lot. Yeah. I, I want to say maybe it's just like, we have to assume time had passed a little bit. Cause when he does tell her that he loves her, she's bringing food down. So like, she's comfortable enough to cook and maybe cook his father's bison stew. I don't know. Like I, it's very hard to tell how much time has passed by. And I think it is a little confusing because I think what you had said when we first watched it was, oh, she's still in the machine whenever the adversary came out. Because it did seem a little psychedelic and like, what is happening? Um, no, I don't think she is only because the adversary is an actual thing. But I can see why you would have thought that, you know, because well, it, it's so quick and yeah. there's no like transition time. I do think that there's something more meta going on. Mm. I don't. So I do think maybe if she's not in the machine, maybe she fell out of the machine and she's in some sort of coma or something like that. Because the fact that the person who voices Storm also voices the adversary, Mm. right? That's telling us that this is an inner demon that she's fighting. Whatever this is that's stopping her from accessing her powers is still has a hold on her. And the fact that you know, she came crashing through the roof and it started to rain and then the roof closed itself. So, well, this is where it gets like kind yeah. of interesting because the adversary is an actual demon. Mm-hmm. That's like a manifestation of Forge's like cultural heritage. He like, it came about because he used these abilities to fight in the Vietnam War mm-hmm. and that demon kind of came about. And so he thought we got rid of it, but it's still around. This is like a whole part of the story. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do the adversary here. And if, you know, the adversary could be there, but it's just in her mind, which also is scary because yeah. Ford can't see it. Right. So that's, it's going to be interesting to see like what is real and what isn't like what is actually happening. And so maybe if it is in her mind, right, that him professing her love out of nowhere is just her feeling their attraction to each other and it being no. expounded upon in her mind. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. No, it has to happen. I'm <laughs> saying it is going to happen. I'm just saying in her <laughs> mind, she's like, mm, maybe. You know, one of the things that like, I always thought, I, I thought it was funny that Storm and Gambit had the same hair a little bit. Mm. And like her changing her appearance is like a huge part of her, her story and her character. And this is kind of one of those big character moments. I feel like I wish they would have like, had her change her appearance in this instance, like after like Forge found her and everything and she's getting back to her and she needs to, you know, um, that's like a minor critique. Like fully transform. Exactly. Yeah. Because it was, a, it's a little interesting when it's like, she has the mullet hawk. I would, that's what I want to call it. But she has the original outfit. So it's like, so do you think we'll get a new outfit? Maybe. It'd yeah. be nice. You know, because there's a whole like punk storm story that I'm hoping we get. Maybe I would not. like, wouldn't it be so cool? And maybe this does exist, but I would love to see an entire team of punk, right? So like <laughs> punk storm, spider punk. Kind of like, I mean, just watch the 2000s X-Men where they all wear leather and not the actual costumes. Oh, well, oh, 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 I thought you meant X-Men evolution. <laughs> no, I was going to start dancing. No. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, one of the interesting things that does happen in this is it's a little abrupt, but Forge tells her that he's the one that pretty much made the weapon. That took her powers away. And that's also one of the reasons that motivated him to like help her. Yeah. I like that. She's like, why are you so obsessed with me? And he's like, well, uh, I'm sorry. He's like, I made the plans, but like I left (laughs) and she's like, you still did it. He was some guy in Scotland. (laughs) What do you want from me? Storm? (laughs) I mean, I, I like the dynamic, right. And I like the story they're trying to tell. I want more. 
of it, right? And I think an important thing, because Storm is that character. She is that Omega level threat. She is a beloved character. So to see her so down is jarring, but I think helps with the character and does humanize her a little bit um, or mutinize her. Or she's a human now. I don't know. <laughs> no, go with it. And so I'm curious to see where this goes. You know, I don't think we have part two next week. It UN it stuff. Skips. And then part two. So we have a little bit to wait. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you in the sense that I am like a little perturbed that here we are, you know, almost, you know, 20 years later or, or we are like 20 years later and they're making sure we stick around. Right. It's like, give me more storm, man. <laughs> I had like one, two episodes of her being amazing. Yeah. And now I have, you know, an eighth of an episode of her, you know, fighting an owl or whatever. <laughs> I also like when they were riding horses that like she was trying to beat him and Forge just didn't tell her there was a cliff. He's like, keep going, lady. <laughs> keep going. He's like, you think that's fast? Wait until you fall off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess to wrap it up. Yeah. You know. Any final thoughts? Any? I, I'm, you know, I'm perfectly happy with the episode. I feel like it can only go up from here. Uh, we're really having some of these characters dig deep, find out who they truly are. And I'm sure there's going to be a badass fight at the end of the season where we really get to see them rip. Yeah. I, like die? No, rip. <laughs> rip it up. <laughs> isn't that what? Oh, like RIP. Rip. Yeah. But isn't that what they say in the bear? Like rip it up. I don't know, cousin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I feel like the first three episodes, very high. This mm. one is just like, I think from like a critical perspective, it's like, eh, this is interesting decisions. Still fantastic. They and said, it's, we got a fluff and nutter and a ham sandwich. All right. What? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I think it was an interesting way to do it. But, you know, I'm who am I to say? I don't make this stuff. I know it's hard. I, I mean, it. I mean, this is, we are us to say it. So <laughs> that's our thought. Yeah. So let us know what you thought. Yeah. Um, next week we have two episodes coming fallout and X-Men 97 episode full five. I'm so confused with these. There's too many numbers going on. My back hurts. <laughs> I want to lay down. You got it. We, we made it through. We hated the episode and that's, no. yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm we kidding. did not. We didn't. I'm saying that now we didn't. No, the reason I hate the episode is now all I'm going to be thinking about is a $500 (laughs) X-Men video game arcade cabinet. So Uh, we'll put it down in the description in case you want to buy it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. And then do you love it? Invite us over so we can play it. Party. Because we're not buying it. Support us on Patreon (laughs) so we can afford it. We'll put a separate goal. Yeah. $500 to the. (laughs) They're going to get and do it. Do it. Uh, All right. So, till next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>